Welcome to the fourth lecture on Mathematica for Physics. In this lecture, we will learn the replacement rule, which is one of the most important features of Mathematica. So let's begin. If I have some quantity like f of a plus f of b, and I want to apply a rule such that f of anything becomes anything q. So what I do? So if I pass if I say f of anything is anything q, the result should be aq plus bq. So what I do, after writing the expression, I write slash dot, which is the symbol for replacement. And I give the rule. So f of x underscore means any single expression. So f of anything. And I do a dash and a greater than symbol, which is the symbol for assign operator. So this assigns of f of anything to x q. So you see f of a plus f of b when I apply this rule, the application of rule is given by the replacement symbol which is slash dot. So f of a became a cube and f of b became b cube. So this is how we apply replacement rules. If I have sine of x and I want to assign x as pi. So just I just write, I give the replacement symbol and I get x right arrow and I write pi. Sine of pi is 0, which is the right result. So now suppose if I have something like log x square and y. So the result should be 2 log x plus log y using the normal log arithmetic. So now if I and just simplify of the previous expression, I do not get the desired result because Mathematica does not know the rules of log simplification. So let's create the rules. So I define the rule as if I have log of two expressions a and b what it's supposed to do is do log of a and log of b. So now define this rule. So to apply this rule, I again write the same function log of x squared space y and the replacement operator and then the rule. So you see this became log x square plus log y. Now log x square should become 2 log x. So I amend the rule by adding by adding c on its score. And if I have something raised to the power of something, this should become the sign operator is given by dash and greater than symbol d log c. Now when I apply the rule, it did not do the desired calculation. The reason is, let me perform the calculation and then I'll explain. Now I use double slash you will see the difference. Using double slash and dot, I got the desired output. The reason is that once I use replace, it just performs the replace operation once and a double slash is repeated replace operation, which means that it keeps on replacing the expression till it gets the most simplified form, that is when rules can no longer be applied. So in the same way, if I want log, say if I have three things, log x, log y, log z, and I use the single replace, what it gave me log x plus log yz, because it applied the rule only once. What I need, I need it to reply, I need it to apply the rule till it cannot apply it anymore, which will give me the most simplified form. So I have to do log x, y, z 
and then repeat it, replace, and then root. And I got the desired output. Let's create a small example of sorting a list. So I define my sort as if I have these quantities x, y, n. So if you remember, something with 3 underscore means it can be anything. It can be empty or it can contain as many values as possible, as many expressions. Similarly, L and M refer to anything, while X and Y are labeled single expressions. So, to sort, I define, remember, slash colon was condition, which we covered in the last lecture. So, what I want to do is, if X and Y are not order, order them. So, what I do is, This is the function to check the ordering and I pass my variables x and y and so see exclamation means not. So if they are not ordered what the result will be L as it is because L can be anything so anything that is in front will come as it is. If it is not ordered then y will come front and then x and then I will again get whatever was behind. So this is my sort, this is the rule that I have defined. Say I have an example, li let, let's create an example list of numbers 1, 2, 5, 1, 2, 5, 0, 9, 0, 7, 2 and I want to apply the sort operation. So what I do, example list and then apply the rule. it did not sort because again I have to apply repeated replace. So when I do that, you see it became sorted, zero came in front. The last thing what I want to cover in replace is delayed replace. So I will show by an example. Let's create a list. So if I have F1, F2, and F3. I, okay, I have a function, I have a list of two functions, F1 and F2. Suppose I apply the rule, so such that F of anything to generate a random number. So you see, it generated the same random number. This is not a coincidence. What happened is that first the right hand side of the rule was evaluated and then wherever it found this expression it replaced with that. This is not what we wanted. If I wanted random real numbers, if I wanted different real numbers, different random numbers, what I do is I again give the list and pass the replacement rule with this symbol. F of random real. So now you see we got different random numbers, which is what we wanted. What colon and greater than symbol this symbol does is it waits for the argument and then it applies. So compared to the first method, it waited for f1 and then it applied the random function. It waited for f2 and then it applied the random function. So we got two different values. Whereas here, first it created a random value and then it placed it everywhere where it, where it matched f of x. So suppose it got 0 0.355. So it found f1 satisfying this. So it placed it there, it found F2 satisfying this, so it placed it there. So sometimes we may need this delayed replacement operator. So let me assign, let me write a comment here. Comment is given by all 7. So this symbol assigns the delay the 
expression assigns value to expression only after argument is received. Okay. So with this we have covered replacement. The last topic I want to deal with is dynamic plots. In the previous lectures we saw how to make a plot. So I'll refresh it for you. Suppose I want to plot x square. So I just give plot x square and then give the range. So I give the range from 10 to 10. And this creates a plot of my x square. Suppose I had something like a x square, where a can be any number. So using this function to plot for different values of a is quite cumbersome. What would be nice is that as I change my values of a, this plot gets dynamically updated. So to do that, we have a function called dynamic. How it is applied is, I write dynamic app and then give plot. Suppose I have a function sign ax and I give the range of x 0 to 5 and I say this is an argument of the plot function which can be seen from here with the range of full. So right now I haven't assigned the value of a. So you see if I give a as 1 if I give a as 2, it gave me the result. So you see the plot is getting dynamically updated, which is quite useful. If I want to have a slider, rather than giving changing a like this, if I want to have a slider, what I'll do, there's a function called slider, and I give dynamic a, because a will be changing all the time, and I define the range, say 0 to 4. So now I get a slider. As you see, as I change the value of a, the plot changes. So the dynamic operation is quite useful. The add symbol was used because dynamic is a function. So this is the this is another way to apply functions. I could have easily encapsulated in square brackets. So, but it's quite easy to use add symbol. So we will stick with that. So with this, we finish our module on basics of Mathematica. After this, in the next modules, we will learn practical applications of Mathematica, starting with general relativity. Thanks for watching. See you next time.